what we're going to do here is just try to demonstrate some of the very basic principles about the cattle behavior and flight zone, point of balance, some of those things. So everything we do around these cattle will influence them to some extent. So you notice that I walk down here, these cattle are already starting to pay attention to me. And so what I have to do now is to really make sure when I enter the pen and ask them to come out, that they're already communicating to me what they need. And so I can bring these cattle out and I'm gonna start working on point of balance as soon as I go in here. Cause I want these cattle to draw to me and come out of this pen. We'll see how they work. But uh, one thing I'll do here is I want them to come out so I can either step in here if they're gonna keep backing up, I'm gonna put pressure on them away from where I want them to go. And I want them to learn. And when I put pressure on them, I want them to go somewhere. So when I get them up here, then I can release these cattle. I'll put pressure on them and then I'll get movement. I've got to get them all turned the right direction. And I'll get them to go out the gate by just standing here and putting pressure and pulling those cattle up. I don't want to go behind them. When you go behind them, it has a tendency to create some opposite draw to those cattle. So here we'll just get them to all come back by. I'll probably put these cattle in the pen and then we'll pull some out. And then we can demonstrate on a smaller group some individual things. But to start with, we've already taught them to come by me. And so now I'm gonna let them, you need, every once in a while you need to take just a moment to let the cattle kind of settle, get used to the surrounding. This is gonna be a new and a novel pen to them. And there's a couple of things I wanna to try to do here. The point of balance discussion is one of them. The type of pressure we put on them is another. Here I'm gonna put pushing pressure. I'm gonna push these cattle until they move push. Now if I want them to stop, I've got to teach these cattle to stop. So right now they're just they're enjoying themselves. But as, as we get cattle moving, I can push on them. But then if I step forward, I should be able to stop them. I want to draw them forward so they're still turning back. So I'm going to try to draw their attention to me a little bit. And they're still just looking around to see what they can get into right now. But I want to be able to get them to walk by me. Now here I'm going to draw their attention to me. I would like for them to kind of come by one at a time. I'm going to step to them just a little bit. Let them draw by. If I need to stop one, I can step up or I can step back and send one forward. Get to where I can stop these cattle or start them as I need to. This now I'm drawing these cattle. I have a drawing pressure on this last one. I can step forward and release him. So it takes very little movement sometimes to get these cattle to really work for you. Now there's more draw, natural draw going the other way. And so I'm gonna have to reposition myself. So when they start, I've gotta be further ahead of them to get them to stop. On the other side, I'd be right there with them. Now I can step down. I can back up and stop, step to them, draw them. Now I've got my drawing pressure and pull these cattle to me. This one, I just have to get her attention and she'll probably want to come to her buddies. Now I can draw her to me. So <clears throat> once you figure out the buttons on these cattle, it gets very easy to get them to work for you. Now <clears throat> I'm gonna send them back down the other side We've worked on this side by the water trough, so it'd be a little different going on this side. Put just enough pressure, get my draw started. Now I can step back and pull these cattle to me. Step up and stop them. Go down their side and start them. Now here, we've got less draw going that way. 
natural draw so we can control those cattle. Then you get to where you can control them individually. And so that's point of balance we're working on. The diagrams always show point of balance right at the point of the shoulder. And that's pretty true in a lead up to a shoot, which is where that concept was developed. But out here, I can draw cattle to me from way out in front by using this drawing pressure. So here, I can step over here and draw this cattle in forward because the point of balance, I always say if you're, you have to be behind the shoulder and now right here, I even have trouble stopping these cattle from way out here in front. So the point of balance is very different on these cattle based on where you're located and what kind of draw you have in front of them. So here I can step down. Now this one I nearly had to get, we have cattle in front and behind. This little pen they circled behind me. Now I want to draw these cattle. I want her to get to where she'll stop. She's just having fun this morning. But I want her to pay attention to me so I can draw her to me. And I want her to pay attention because if not, they'll get to where they'll run over you. So now I can step forward and draw them to me. But once I, I want control on those cattle when I ask them to do something. And they're cattle are cattle. They're going to do what they do. But we can develop some control on them. They feel good exuberant here in the yard. And that's what you want to see in cattle anyway. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the eye. Everything we do in controlling cattle works in relationship to the eye. So I want to draw this heifer's eye around. And I'll use my hand a little bit, my body position. Now as she's looking at me, I can put pressure on her and get her to go somewhere. Now I've stopped her down there twice. She didn't want to go back that in. But we use their, their eye to control and manage how we move them. And to demonstrate, we do that as a group. And one thing I want to demonstrate is <clears throat> how we do that. We can draw on an eye or we can push on an eye. Now if I step in here, I'm going to push on this heifer's eye. But if she don't trust me, she won't turn away from me. She still feels really good. But I want to push on this left eye. Because cattle <clears throat> naturally have a tendency to want to turn towards you. And in, nature, in a lot of stuff we do, we need cattle to turn away from us. And so we need to get to where we can push them away. And they'll, this little heifer goes back into that group. She'll turn her rear end to me. And I can take and push her in that corner and she'll actually bring all the cattle out of the corner just by the pressure I put on her. So we can, if she'll push away from me in that eye, I can use that to turn cattle around. Now these cattle are distracted by a lot of things this morning, which is fine. We got them in a new pen, new setup. But I want to be able to turn them toward me or away from me. So here I'm going to try to draw this little red heifer's eye this way. Now if I draw her this way, I can stop her, hopefully. Now I'm going to draw her head to me. I want to turn her away from me to my left. I haven't got her eye drawn to me enough yet to do that. Now I can step in here, push her eye away. She's funny. She's, now she's still hooked on to me. I haven't been able to get her eye unhooked. She's still paying attention to some of these other cattle. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do something here. We'll kick some of these in the alleyway if we can and work on one. <clears throat> that way she can focus on me and we'll see what we have. So here I'm gonna draw these cattle's eye. I'm gonna try to keep the little red heifer back and we'll work on her. She just, cause she's fun to work with. Now she's also gonna to wanna to go. She's got a lot of go to her. I can use a little bit of sound to communicate. 
who communicate through sight and sound. And now I can lead, let these cattle ease out. I can get this other black calf to come down this side. We'll do that. Now here I want to be able to turn her away. Once again, got a lot of draw. I'm gonna push her back. Now hopefully this get this one up far enough. I can drop and pull my black calf out. Now I've got to get down here far enough to get her to stop. If I'd have stayed too close, the draw of these other calves would have really affected how she behaved. So now let's see if we can, it may take her a while to get over being by herself too. Let me just take a minute, see if she'll start paying attention to me or if she's gonna be drawn to those other calves so much. Now I'm gonna start working her a little bit so maybe she'll start paying attention to me. But I wanna be able to push on this eye. Now, if she doesn't trust me yet, she's gonna to turn toward me every time. So I'm just gonna keep pushing on her a little bit. Like I said, these calves are not used to being by themselves. And so they'll react very differently to start with. They gotta get her thinking. She's not thinking right now, she's just reacting. So now here I can step over here and pull her head around. I wanna get her where I can get her attention. She's still thinking about where her buddies went. So here I can draw that eye out of the corner, pull her back up here. I like to step to this side, I can get her to go that direction. Now here I wanna push her eye out of the corner. Now, now she's where I can draw it out. Try to stop her. Now I've got drawing pressure again. I can step over here, draw her head to me, and I can turn her back to her right, my left, by just putting pressure on this outside eye. So that gets to be your steering mechanism. You do it as a group or individual animals. So once again, draw her attention to me, draw her this direction. Now I'm gonna to try to draw her out enough Oop, I was too late there. I want to draw her out enough that I can turn her away from herself. That makes sense. If I got to get her far enough away from the fence, then I can get her to turn away from me. Right now she's very willing to turn toward me, but not, not away from me. And if I can draw her out a little bit, I can get, she may be not quite far enough yet. She still likes to stay on the fence. Now we've got her where, here I can push on her now. She's away from the fence and I can turn her away from me. If I try that too close to the fence, she doesn't have room to turn. So you've got a set up here. I might be able to get her to turn back into the corner rather than face me. Now she's gotten a little close to the fence. If I do get her to put her head in the corner, then I've got to take pressure off of her when she does. And now I can probably turn her on around. There you go. If I put too much pressure on her too close, she doesn't have room to turn there. Okay, we'll let her relax just a little bit. Try to do a few more things. Once again, the behavior gets very different when they get by themselves and don't have their buddies. She's not disturbed, she's just nervous. But all of her focus is on going back to her pen mates and not on me, particularly when she's working on this side of the pen. So here I'm gonna 
try to actually draw her eye back to this side. But I may not do that. I may have to push on this eye to get her to turn. And then when she does, I need to back up or she might actually go too fast. She didn't do that. She's more disturbed about not being with her buddies. All right. Now, if I stay too close, she's gonna turn. I'm gonna look this way. And now I can, I should be able to push on her eye and turn her back that way. So her eyes are her steering mechanism. We use her ears to get her attention. Here I want to take just a little bit of time. She turned naturally, I didn't really get to do anything there. I don't want her going through the bunk either. So let me work on this other end of the pin. I'm draw her attention back inside the pen before I put any pressure on her. And now I can send her away. If I want her to stop, go up her side enough to stop her. Now notice I'm still behind the point of balance. If I were to go forward, I might actually turn this heifer back to the, to the bunk end. So here I can step in, put a little pressure, move her off. If she gets calmed down, she'll get a little easier to move. Try to stop her again. If I can teach her to stop, it will help her and me both. Now I want to draw her head out of the corner this time. Where I use just a little sound. Once again, she's not paying attention to me. I'm trying to stop her before she got there. Still want to draw her head out. There we go. Now that I can draw her head around and send her back up this other side. But I want to be able to stop her and get her, let her calm down a little bit. She's getting easier to work the more she's figured out this is not a real problem being by herself. Once again, being able to stop one, move her forward, but just easing in. Now, I have to step in and put more pressure on her because she's not really wanting to think. But if I pull pressure off, she'll stop. Now she's getting much softer in the way she's handling. I'd like to send her forward and turn her away from me now. I didn't get it done. But now I'm gonna try to push her back. She probably is gonna to turn to me. She's a little close to the fence. But if I can back her up here now, I've got a chance to turn her away from me and stop her. So as they switch eyes and pick us up on the other side, that's why turning away from them is so important. We teach them to trust us enough to lose sight of it. Because when we get behind them, they lose sight of us. And so we have to, I, I like to step to the other side so they can pick me up quicker. And that way they calm down just a little bit easier. That she's finally starting to respond to me, even though she's still worried about her buddies. And we'll see if I can push her away from me here and turn her back down the fence very softly. There we go. Now she's getting to where she's really wanting to work for me and not against me. So here I want to draw her head out of the corner. All right. Now if I want to send her forward, I got to step in just a little bit, but I want to be able to stop her softly. There, she's still going to the fence and being drawn to the other cattle quite a bit. Let's see if we can turn her down the fence this direction and stop her pretty soft. She's getting where she's real responsive here. Now, it, if she takes off here, she may go pretty fast. But she's getting where she really, now if I step forward and go past her point of balance, she's listening to me and not worrying as much about her buddies and what they're doing. So this is, this is where I want to get cattle 
to her, even with all the other distractions, she's still paying attention to me and responding to me in my body position. Step over here, draw her head. I want to draw her head to me. I can step on this side now. Nope. Got too much draw down here. I'm gonna see if I can pull her head back around. I'd like for her to step across, but she got her buddies down here. She's drawn to. Now, step across. There we go. Now she had so much draw there that it got hard to get her head turned. But here I can step in softly, turn her away from me. Pick me up, there we go. Now here we can draw on an eye, turn her around. Look how much her flight zone has changed as she's got to work for me as well. We'll go down the fence with her just a little bit. It's interesting, Dr. Hale just coughed and drew her attention that direction. So that sight and sound is really important to these cattle. I'll do one more little thing with her here. She kind of, I've lost her again. She's more worried about getting out of there. That's the interesting thing about these cattle that are pinned quite a bit and live in these situations. They get very attached to one another. The herding strength instinct is very strong, which is, is good. It's not a bad thing. But they get to where they're not as re responsive to some things. All right. She's getting where she's really really kind of fun. She still wants to go back to her buddies. I'm just going to ease her down here. One thing I like about her right now, she should be soft enough to stop by getting in front of her point of balance. Now see, I had to go quite a bit further coming this way to get her to stop than I do have going that way because it's going away from her herd mate. So we have a lot of what we call drawing pressure that brings cattle forward and that is harder to stop. You have to get further in front of them to get them to stop than if I'm going away from them. We'll try to demonstrate that one more time and then we'll call it good on this little heifer. But if she heads up that fence, it's actually kind of hard to get her to start going forward. But when I do, I can probably stop her a lot. Of, well, maybe not. She likes going to this bunk. But here, just as I pass the point of balance, she stops. All right, I'll quit harassing her. She's done pretty good. Allow me to demonstrate. Now here, when she turns, she may go back to her buddies pretty quickly. So I've got to be soft in how I turn her. And now we can stop her. If I get her feet still and she gets comfortable, it's what we'd kind of call parking them. And we'll just see if she'll stay there comfortably for just a minute. The reason that's important is if we want to pull one from a pin or something, we get their feet kind of square, they'll stop and stand there. And if they're comfortable, they'll normally stay that way for a while. So even if I walk away from her, if she's comfortable, she's probably going to stay there until I come back and get her. If I wanted to send them to their feeding pen, I could come get my gait. She's still focused on me. I can step back to her, start using my drawing pressure. Now I've got to unpark her, don't I? We parked her good enough, she's not even moving. So now I can start her and she's going to go out the gate. But by stopping them, looking at where you want them to go, you can go open your gate and they, they know what you're trying to ask them to do next and they'll go, go forward and do it. So that's kind of fun to play with those things about them and understand how to get them to stop, start, turn, and then we can apply that to a group, group basis. I'll put these back in their home pen and we'll let them relax.
Now these little na narrow alleyways are interesting. If cattle are not very gentle, sometimes these narrow alleyways are very difficult to get cattle to come by you. But I'm still gonna use the same techniques here as I've used everywhere else. I'm just gonna put enough pressure on them that they'll start turning and looking at me. If I put too much pressure, they're not gonna to wanna to come back the other way. Now if little Red will turn here, I can draw her head around and send them back to their home pen. But if I'd have kept putting pressure on them, that it just kept pushing and pushing into that corner and wouldn't go home. Might step to this one to get her to come forward. That's about the narrow alleyways. She's not comfortable going by me. And so she just keeps pushing away from me. But I don't want to keep extra pressure on her just to make her to come so they'll naturally come back to where they need to go. But the little red heifer was interesting. She's the one that drew back to me and allowed me to move her back to her home pen easy. But to get them out of a tight spot like that, sometimes you take pressure off. It's what we call a drawing pressure, draw them out of that corner, and then they can come by you. Nice set of little heifers to mess with.